it's just asking it's connecting okay it started recording um just one thing i i should have mentioned before we started recording um we are recording this session and obviously the resulting video will be made online for any reason uh you don't want to be in that video for any particular reason then uh obviously you must only have your names there but uh you do have the choice not to be in that video if you don't wish by leaving the room okay so um, that's our logo. Uh, next page, please. Okay, so I'll, first of all, I'll talk a little bit about uh, the European projects. Um, this project, uh, AutoSTEM, is funded through the uh, European Union projects uh, for education called the Erasmus Programme. And this is a particular project that um, that uh, is a large scale project involving a number, uh, one, two, three, four, five partners from across Europe. And I'll detail who those partners are in a moment. But the idea of the uh, project is to create new resources uh, for all the schools of Europe. And in fact, all the schools of the world because resources we make uh, are put up on the website. They are freely available and we're gonna show you those resources later. This particular project is designed for students from about four to eight years old, more on the younger side. But please turn off your audios. Okay, so you're not talking over it. Can you, oh, I'm gonna to have to do mute all and then put you back on. Please, please make sure your uh, videos and audios are turned off. Thank you. So continue. So they're for young students and the idea of this project is to introduce STEM areas, mathematics, sciences, engineering, to very young children in a, in, a, in a way that is very amenable and motivating for them. Um, and Oliver is gonna explain this much further in his part of the presentation. Uh, I'll just say about a little bit about Oliver while I've got there. Oliver is actually a professor of mathematics, yeah? Not yes. if that's right. Mathematics <clears throat> education. Yes. Yeah. And he actually teaches at a specialist institute in um, Norway, in Trondheim, uh, which teaches kindergarten and early years uh, teachers. Um, now, a bit about automata. We're going to show you a video in a moment of some of the sort of automata that we're making. But these are toys that move. So we, maybe we remember we've seen some of them are even in museums now where you sort of have a toy and you turn a handle and that produces a motion. So that's the sort of thing we're doing, but we've expanded that from just a simple clockwork sort of turning and gears into other ways and other forms of uh, propulsion and, mo and movement. And you're gonna see some of those. Um, all the automata that we have brought into the project, we've got about 10 or 12 so far, are made from very easily found materials, very common within the school. You don't have to get anything new. It's all there and the tools are very much designed for smaller children to use as well. So that's where uh, we're going and that's what we're gonna show you. Now at this point, I'd like to show the video that we've made just to introduce a few different uh, automata that have been made. So there may be a little bit of gap while we get that running uh, Oliver's going to do that. And then Oliver's going to take over from me after that to explain more about the automat and how, and the pedagogy and how it can be used in your classrooms. Thank you, Oliver.
By the way, I believe the, the boat is still crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Anybody who is in New York, please keep an eye out and can you send it back? Thank you. Over to you, Oliver. Yes. Great. The presentation is back. Yeah, is it? it's back. Okay, now I cannot see myself. Uh, that's okay, but, that's the same that, with me. But we can see yes. you. Yes. Um, I want to explain how the automata are uh, related to the STEM areas. And uh, I will use our logo to um, explain it because uh, the logo, the four parts of the, of the logo uh, represent the four uh, STEM areas. So that is, uh, STEM is an abbreviation for uh, science, technology, mathematics, and engineering. And uh, automata are technology because technology is about machines and uh, tools and uh, automata as we uh, um, understand it are simple machines. Uh, for example, uh, like a car. This is uh, a further development of the uh, of the boat you have seen. So a boat that is a car as well. It's on an uh, amphi car. Uh, and it's a machine and it's technology. So we are using technology and not uh, for most uh, digital technology, but simple mechanical technology. And the children will learn a lot about how simple mechanics mechanisms work when they build the automata and when they play with it. With it. My field, in fact, is mathematics. And here we use a framework uh, that is very common in uh, early childhood education uh, by Alan Bishop, an um, British and Australian uh, mathematician. And he has uh, done research on what is the most fundamental in mathematics, what is common uh, in all cultures. And there are six activities. Uh, locating is about spatial relations. So when you, uh, I don't know if you can see it, uh, that is an example. And I can explain all the uh, activities on this example. So it's designed, that is designing, it is the shapes. So when the uh, children are making it, you can talk about the shapes, uh, rectangles. Uh, then it's about counting. So how many parts of each do you need to assemble it? How many uh, split pins uh, you need and, and so on. Uh, it's about locating, so that is the parts have to be arranged in a, a certain way so that it will function. Uh, and it's about uh, a pattern, for example, is important here. And that is an important part of the design. So all the parts that go in this direction have to be in the front and the parts in the other direction are in the back, uh, so that it smoothly uh, works. And, and then, uh, for example, the face of the uh, crocodile, you have uh, to fit the teeth into where each other and so on. Uh, that is important parts of designing and explaining is, of course, that we are talking with the children about how it is assembled and how it works. And uh, for example, that it, in this position, it is very short and here it gets very long and you can do something. You can use it as a tool. You can uh, lift something up, for example, so that crocodile can bite and eat something and so on. So there is a lot of playing involved. 
So that is the mathematics, a lot of mathematics, a lot of mathematical concepts, words uh, that we use while the children are making it and as well when they are playing with it. So here it's uh, on a picture as well. And it's an animal, so it's related to biology. So some of our uh, automata toys are representing animals. Uh, I have some pictures here as well. So we have an elephant, for example, and a bird and a um, uh, butterfly. So you can use the uh, automata when you teach uh, or work or let the children explore some uh, bio concepts from biology, zoology, uh, animals and how the animals live and, and so on. And then of course, uh, physics, mechanics, that is uh, science as well. And, uh, and we use, and you can see this here, this is a milk carton uh, and, and the bottle tops and, and so on. So we use uh, recycling materials. So that is about recycling and uh, sustainability. So a, a lot of different science concepts that you can, that are involved when the children make the automata and play with the automata. And the engineering part is of course about the design uh, the difference between a scientist and an engineer is, of course, that the science is exploring how the world works, but the engineer is uh, inventing new things, making new things. So uh, we have done some engineering work by engineering uh, these automata and, and the children can as well um, yeah, be inspired to invent their own toys, own uh, automata that can represent cars or animals or, or whatever. Uh, and that can be a further development of things we have already uh, here, or it can be on new inventions using some of the mechanical concepts, for example, of the automata. And when you look, for example, on the most famous engineer, uh, that is Leonardo da Vinci, uh, then it is uh, very clear that engineering is closely related to arts. So arts uh, has a role in our project as well, and that you can see in how the, the automata are designed. That is not only that they function, it's uh, as well that the aesthetics, that it looks nice and, and the uh, children can be creative when making their own automata. And uh, the creativity is not only in the, uh, in the aesthetic parts, but as well in the engineering parts in, uh, to invent new things. So all uh, parts of STEM are uh, come together when we work with the automata with children. And that is a nice part that you not focus on mathematics only or biology only or engineering only, but all is related to each other. And I think that is the way we should teach uh, STEM in the preschool. So here are some examples uh, from teachers from Italy have been very creative. So uh, that is not only uh, showing that the same mechanism that we use for the crocodile, you can use for many other things as well. And uh, we have asked the teachers that are involved in our projects in, in different countries when we make, make workshops with them. And uh, we got some feedback from them. So they said that uh, so 
all teachers that are involved uh, in the project say that it is uh, important for the children, that the children like it, that the project facilitates creativity and wonder, so that the children become curious about uh, science concepts. They like very much that it is interdisciplinary, so that all the different fields are connected with each other. Uh, but they recommend that um, we should not do too much at the same time. So, uh, for example, it is uh, recommended that we focus, when we have a group of children, that we focus on one automata or, and not uh, introduce several at the same time. And time is needed, of course. Good time, a lot of time. Uh, and um, that might be a problem in school, but our project is focusing on preschool, on the early years, and that is where I teach. So in kindergarten and preschool, you have plenty of time because you have not a strict schedule that you have to follow, but you work in projects and uh, our project is very good adapted to this. So you need time, so children need time to build uh, the automata, to explore how they work and function and to test and play with them. And all these parts are important in the project and for the children's learning and the children will learn in all of these phases of the project. Uh, they will learn a lot about um, science and technology and mathematics. And another recommendation was that it is, should be not too much children in uh, each group. Uh, so it would be difficult with uh, a class of 20 or 30 children. So we work in small groups with four or five children uh, because of course the motorical uh, abilities of the children are not so developed yet. So they need uh, some yell help from the teacher to, to assemble the different parts. But uh, we have chosen very simple uh, automata so that most parts can be done by the children, by themselves. And um, that is from a study with my students. Uh, they made uh, the automata as well. And then we gave them a, a questionnaire uh, with a uh, lot of items about usefulness and value and uh, interest and joy. And it's just the numbers here that show that uh, they are, the feedback is very positive. And now I want to give the word back to Joel. Okay. Thank you very much, Oliver. Um, the, the presentation I'm seeing is a bit uh, fuzzy. It's, it's not as bad as it was. I don't know what's causing it. Maybe the size of it. Um, but I'll try and work off this screen rather than have to go to my presentation on my side. So no, now I've got a block. block uh, okay, that maybe is a bit better. Yeah, okay, I'll work with that. Don't worry. Thank you. Okay, so the point about these European projects, particularly for people who don't live in Europe, they may not know them so much, is what we're actually doing is pre creating new innovative, innovative, I can't say that word, resources for all the schools of Europe. And everything that we make, we put onto our websites and onto other resource sites, which are run by the European Union as free resources for teachers. There's no cost or during the course of the project, there's no cost to actually download these resources or use these resources. After the project, we will be happy to do workshops with teachers all over the globe, providing you can pay for us to come and do it with you. And we're very happy to do that. Um, on the website, um, we'll be giving you the link to the website. In fact, um, Oliver, can you, or somebody else from the team, can you pop the website into the chat, please? 
so people can see. Um, I'm just seeing something on screen from you, I think, Oliver, at the moment. Um, uh, uh, you, you, you'll find um, a whole list of different automata that we've made. And uh, each of those you'll see you can open up. And in there, you'll find uh, some brief details about those particular automata. Um, and also, you'll find a theoretical and pedagogic framework uh, that um, is also in the resources on the website. And uh, finally, we have some more information about key concepts for constructing automata. Uh, that's in the teacher guides. Within each individual automata, we have a downloadable sheet, templates, and videos telling you how you can make and use that automata exactly within your STEM teaching and the children can construct those that particular automata. Um, and just so you know, we're actually just over halfway through the project and obvious like everything else and everybody, we've actually come to a stop because of the, uh, the virus, of course, which means we can't travel and we can't meet with each other, um, though we are working online. Uh, we are actually expanding on ideas of scenarios that you can use uh, to expand what you're doing with those automata. So for example, one of the scenarios we're thinking about and working on is the river because we have birds, we have elephants, we have crocodiles. So those could come into play as an ecological way of going forward into another area and using the automata and the ideas within a biological or ecological setting. Um, we are also producing um, resources for planning and re reflecting on the work that you're doing with your children. They're also going to be online. And to date, we've actually got 29 videos of how to make the automata, how to use the automata, how teachers are you already using them or children are using them within their, within their classrooms, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of resources being made and uh, there's all going to be available or are available already online. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So here's a list of... Uh, yes. Okay. Many. So as I say, this is a list directly from the website uh, of the different automata that are made. And when you open up each of those items, uh, you'll see, uh, for, it's okay, you can go forward, Oliver, it's okay. Can you go forward to the one you were on, please? Thank you. Um, so what we've tried to do in those first, no, one back. <laughs> we've gone one too far. Okay. okay, is it maybe there's just a time delay? Okay, that's the one I want. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, in this area, uh, when you click on each of those automata, it tells you uh, what areas of STEM learning are included in that uh, automata and what age group that is suitable for. Uh, there's a video showing how to make the automata. Uh, it has a full teacher step-by-step -step guide how to make that automata, including ideas of how you can use that pedagogically within STEM. And where we have them, we have examples of children making and using that particular automata. Again, where appropriate, there are templates that you can print off on your normal uh, 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 school computers on their printers. And uh, can, can you please turn off your, turn off your, okay, that's muted, sorry about that. Okay, and there's um, templates that you can print off on your normal printers to actually build those automata. Next slide, please. Okay, just waiting for that to come up, great. Um, as I mentioned just now, in each of those automata, there's a full step-by-step -step teacher's guide 
so you can actually um, see exactly what and how you can use that particular automata. And you'll see, and I put an example up here for the Jellybird, um, it shows ideas and ways that you can use that to teach different concepts, mass concepts, geometry, uh, and many other ideas just on that one. So we have very detailed instructions how you can use those automata within your teaching. Uh, next slide, please, Oliver, which I think is the final one. Yes. Yeah. Um, here you can see the links to the different um, resources we have. All the resources are on the website. Uh, you'll find them under, if you, and obviously the different areas, you will then find under resources. Um, the uh, YouTube channel, which we're using, and then we have a Facebook page as well. There's an email there that you can use, which is my email, if you have any particular questions. Before I go on to um, a question and answer session, I just want to say again that we're having a second session on April the 15th on, the, on this actual, um, hi Armin, we saw you briefly. <laughs> Armin was one of our team members from another project. It's really nice he's joined us. He's in Berlin. Um, we're having another session on April the 15th, the same sort of time, I think, um, where we're actually going to be doing one or two of those automata, actually making them. And Oliver, did you actually decide which ones we're going to do so people could prepare and download the materials that they'll need? No, but we oh. can decide now. Maybe, maybe you want to do the crocodile. Well, because we that could. is that is not so difficult. Okay. And it's only it's a cardboard you need, and and this uh, split pins. Yeah. Does everybody okay. know what it is? Okay. So that that's the one we're going to try and make it the next one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oliver's trying to show the split pin. It's a little pin that opens. They used lawyers used to use it to. Uh, to keep papers together, uh, but they work very well in this context. Um, if, you, if you'd like to join that session and like to try actually to make this particular automata, then you will find the instructions how, what you need to do to prepare for that actually um, online on the website. Uh, what do we call it? Just the crocodile? I can't remember. Is it the laughing crocodile? No, it's the, the snapping, crocodile. The snapping no, crocodile. That's it. The snapping <laughs> crocodile. Thank you. <laughs> I know a joke about that. Uh, I'd like a crocodile, sna crocodile sandwich, but make it snappy. Don't laugh. Okay. So now it's your turn. Uh, if you could please, if you have any questions you'd like to ask, do please write into the chat down at the bottom there and we'll do our best to answer any questions or points you'd like to bring up. Um, I haven't used Zoom before, so I don't know if we know that you're actually writing. So just go for it. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Ahmed Sami asks, so what's the biggest aim of the project? Oliver? Yeah, that is... To teach uh, STEM concepts um, for preschool and kindergarten, because that is a, a field I am working on. So in in school you have uh, often a, a very strict curriculum that you have follow and and the mod methods that you should use, but in kindergarten you have more you are more free to use your own uh, methods. And I think it, is, uh, it should be the same in school as well. Uh, but as I explained, the children will learn a lot about uh, science and technology and mathematics while making the automata and while playing with, uh, playing with the automata. And it's fun as well. So it uh, will uh, increase the children's curiosity and motivation for uh, the STEM field. 
So that is the aim of the project. Thank you, Oliver. Um, do you have any tips for helping children? Oh, sorry, Pas Pascal? Yeah, Pascal, tell you. Do you have any tips for helping kids of that age with the fine motor skills involved in projects such as these? C can I just throw my bit in here, Oliver, and then you correct me? Yes. Because you're the expert. <laughs> um, I think what we've very much done, and this very much comes from Oliver, is we, we understand what motor skills children of these ages do have. And I've actually, for the first time in my life, actually did a workshop with five-year-olds. Yes, in Norway, there were five-year-olds, Oliver. Yes. And we actually made the jelly bird. And it was wonderful that the children could do it all themselves. So it's very much a case of understanding the children and creating those um, automata that would suit their skills. Oliver, you correct me now. Tell yeah, me what yes, I got. that's correct. And uh, I think a po an important point is that you trust the children, trust the children's abilities and let them try. And even if it not works, on the first try, they will try again and try again. Uh, and that makes them experts trying again and again. So uh, for example, in Norway, it's no problem to, that children use scissors and knives and such things. And I, I know in some countries it's uh, forbidden because it's dangerous, but if you trust <laughs> them and uh, yeah then we, they will learn it and they will become better and better. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank and Pascal answers, thank you. Uh, are there any other questions anybody would like to throw in? Or have we been such brilliant presenters that we've answered every possible thing that you want? I think that's true, Oliver. <laughs> Okay, so can we just put up the links again, please? Um, I'll try and get them myself as well. Um, something I forgot to do before. Let's try and get that link. So just go back there. Okay, so there's the, I've just put into the chat the auto stem uh, link. And yeah, that's not quite come up. On Facebook, if you just write in auto stem, you'll find us there as well. And what we try to do on Facebook is let you know when we're putting up new resources, new videos, and what's happening in the project. We may have a workshop in your area or something else happening in your area. So it's, it's a nice way that we can keep in touch. They're already interested in, in the project. Um, last time, last chance, any other questions? Or else I'm going for my dinner. Because <laughs> in Britain, it's half past, half past six now. So, okay. So, Oliver, you want to say goodbye or? Yeah, goodbye. And see you next week, maybe, on, on Wednesday. But then it's at six o'clock uh, in Europe, um, not seven as it was today. The so one oh. hour earlier next week on mid uh, Wednesday. Okay. I just remembered something actually. Um, could you just go back to the first to the first slide where I spoke? Because I didn't mention all the project all the project partners, Oliver. I didn't detail them and I, they must be mentioned. Please. Um what, yeah. That was it. Yeah. Okay, just um, I think this is a very important point that I managed to miss and I apologize for that. Um, the way these European projects work, uh, these scale, we, you, we have uh, partners in our case, I think five or six from all over Europe who are very much uh, involved in all aspects of the project. And it's very much why these projects uh, work well because there's that differences of education, of learning and experience from all over Europe and our different attitudes, which means that when we come together, um, it, we, we, we do come up with some very interesting and exciting results. In this instance, the coordinator of the project 
is uh, Dr. Piedade Vaz, I think I always get, I only know Piedade Vaz, who's at the University of Coimbra in Portugal. Oliver is at the Queen Maud University College in Trondheim in Norway. Um, the 32nd school is in Sofia, Bulgaria, and that's a, it's a, a very large school in the middle of Bulgaria that we very much like to have the school involved in our projects so we can try out what we do in a real setting, and we do that with all our partners. Uh, in Italy, in Perugia, we have Eureka, who are um, a, an organization in education in that area. And finally, myself, I'm Kindersight in the UK, and I'm, I don't know what I am, but I'm involved. <laughs> and I noticed, Sarah, you've been talking about Ipale. Uh, I have heard of Ipale, and I can't remember why, but I will write that down, and uh, we'll look that up as well, how that works. Okay. So thank you very much for everybody for coming. Um, keep well, keep healthy. That's very important. And uh, we hope to see you next week as well. And thank you for coming. Bye from UK. Yeah, bye from Norway. Thank you. Oh, Ikoris. Oh, yes, I know Ikoris in Birmingham. Of course, you're part of the national, national um, agency. Okay, we will be in touch. Good to hear from you, Sarah. Bye. I'm going to close. I'm going to stop the recording. I've remembered to do that. Okay.